All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, okay, everybody, welcome back to Type Paris uh, 2017. Um, those of you who were here live in Paris, I hope you enjoyed la bière, the beer, cerveza. Le, you know, you may, maybe you noticed the name of the beer tank. Um, I'm sure you enjoyed the first talk. I hope you, did you enjoy the first talk? Yes. All right. Now it's time for the second one of the evening. Um, he started his career as a graphic designer at Surf Portugal magazine before the end of his graphic design studies at IAD in Lisbon. Lisb Lisboa. In 1994, he founded his uh, studio, design studio, Secretonics, uh, producing a wide range of projects from editorial to uh, corporate design. Uh, in 2001, he uh, commissioned his uh, one typeface for Adobe called Strumpf. And short, uh, Strumpf, Strumpf, Strumpf. Well, it was in 96, not 96. 96. Well, on your bio, it said 2001. Anyway. Okay, correction. In 1996, he created Strumpf for Adobe. And shortly after that, he started uh, Feliciano Type Foundry to publish his own design and creating custom typefaces for clients around uh, the world. He is a member of um, ATP since 1997, is that correct? Okay. And was the local organizer of the annual conference held in Lisbon in 2006. Right. He's also a member of the Alliance Graphique Internationale since 2009. Okay, so I'm starting to have my dates right now. He's the author of several custom typefaces, such as Expresso for the Portuguese weekly newspaper Expresso, uh, Sueca for the Swedish newspaper Svenska Dagbladet, Majerit for the Spanish newspaper El País, and Bez Sans for Banco Espirito Santo. Right? It doesn't exist anymore. He'll say that. He'll, he'll, he'll talk about that more t in, in a minute. Uh, his typefaces have been used uh, by a wide range of clients around the world, uh, from big corporations to renowned international publications, such as Newsweek, The Sunday Times, and Elle magazine. His most popular uh, typeface is Flama, that is used as a customized version on the Portuguese passport and citizen card along with uh, his other typeface, Merlot. In his recent years, he has been working on expanding uh, FTF, which is uh, Feliciano Type Foundry, library, and giving typography consultancy. From surf to strumpf, <laughs> here comes, it's my pleasure to introduce you, Mario Felician. Oh. Okay, bonsoir Paris. I always wanted to do that, like in the Super Trump record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks, Jean-Francois. I wrote some words, but I don't think that I will be able to hang the paper, the microphone, and this. So I will try um, to move on uh, without using the... Um, the notes that I take. So uh, I start uh, drawing since I was um, very young. This is not working, so <laughs> maybe. Okay. Sorry for this. Something. Oh, okay. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. So this is, uh, okay, this is me when I was, because this confused me, I'm seeing two images, I have to look there. 
Uh, this is me at a very young age, maybe drawing my first typeface, and this is some of my early work. But everything changed when I was uh, a teenager and I start uh, listening to um, post-punk music and even punk rock, and that influenced me uh, a lot to, to, to want it to change from being an architect to become a, a graphic uh, designer. So after that, I start while I was in college. Oh, this is going too fast for me. I start making some uh, illustra illustrations, quite abstract, and try to uh, introduce some uh, type into that. Then the 90s came and I got a lot influenced by uh, the famous uh, graphic designer David Carson. I was working uh, in a surf magazine and he was working uh, in Surfer 2, a magazine that I, I have been um, buying for quite a while. And uh, so I, I really got inspired by his work and also by uh, the work of uh, Imigri that um, was also very uh, popular by the time. And I stayed as a art director uh, of Surf Portugal for almost eight years, uh, not really designing uh, the, the, the magazine monthly, but having a studio that was producing the magazine and uh, directing it, doing uh, typography, but also uh, illustration. Those are two of my favorite illustrations that I made over photography, but this is not Photoshop, uh, that I made for uh, um, Surf Portugal. And then it came um, type design. Uh, Jean-François Porchy. I know he doesn't want me <laughs> to speak, but uh, it's not possible for me to speak about my work without uh, mentioning Jean-François. I know him since 1997, so that makes 20 years. I, I think I still had some hair by that time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the first, I was actually mentioning is this uh, early today, the first talk that I ever saw about typography was given by Jean-François Porcher about his uh, typefaces that he designed for Le Monde. And that conference really had an impact on me. And from that moment, I decided that I wanted to become not just a typeface designer, but a typeface designer f uh, making typefaces for newspapers. And it's your fault. So <laughs> and Eventually, it end, uh, ended up happening. So this is a, a project I made 10 years ago for uh, El Pais. They keep using uh, this font called Majerit, which is the original Arab name for Madrid. Madrid, Majerit, you can see the connection. So the previous typeface they have used was made by Matthew Cutter called Madrid. And I wanted to go a step back and call it Majerit. Last year, they came back to me to redesign my own typeface. That was one of the biggest challenges that I got because it was uh, meaning to, I had to, to revisit what I have done 10 years ago and certainly found things that I was not expecting. So <laughs> it took me quite a while until I, I, I was able to feel comfortable with a new project. And that's the project that I'm working on at this moment and I'm going to show you most of the things that I will show you, or at least half, are not published. Because if you want to see my work that is published, you go on the internet and you find it. So I will show you projects that are not concluded, at, at, that are in the process of making. But I found it more interesting. So I changed the name of the typeface. I removed the, the E that I have uh, put on the word when I made the typeface. And I returned to the original Arab word, which is Majrit. So the new typeface is instead of 12 versions or something like that that existed in the first one as uh, 48 fonts uh, divided in four master sizes, one with more contrast for bigger sizes and the smaller uh, sizes with less contrast. Uh, each of the master sizes is divided in uh, uh, six weights. This shows you more or less the differences between the the smaller and the uh, bigger sizes. In this case, this difference is not 
that great because the, the, the newspapers are reducing their size and therefore the difference between the smallest type in the newspaper and the biggest one is not that big. When we talk about big type, we are talking about this. This is an example of how the typeface works on text. Of course, here on the screen you don't see it that well, but uh, I made it a lighter version than the original one because they also want to use the, the font on their sup weekend uh, supplements. So the one on the left is new and the one on the middle is the one based on the, the one that they are actually using now. This is uh, another example of um, how the typeface uh, works. You're seeing the, I'm, I'm glad I didn't wrote this, uh, you're seeing the figures here. This typeface, I have introduced a feature that I, 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 have, I haven't done in any of my other faces. Uh, is that, that the figures have a different height through the weights. Uh, the Roman figures are smaller than the bolder ones. Like, uh, this is more for type designers and less for uh, graphic designers, but as we uh, uh, increase the X8 of uh, a bold face so it looked the same height as the regular, I've done the same uh, for the figures. Because in a newspaper, the figures play an important role. And they can become very fuzzy when they are not uh, appropriately designed. And I found out that having this change through the weight actually helps uh, the reading of the figures. This is an example of the more contrasted version, the Banner Avengers, that is supposed to be used in the bigger sizes. Am I speaking très vite? Vous voulez que je parle en français? Ça va bien, hein? Jean-François. J'ai pris un viro dans l'avion et je n'arrive plus à parler en anglais. Ça me dit ça dans Non, non, en anglais? Oh, ouais, oh, ouais, sorry. OK. Uh, this is the, the, the big version again. The on the lighter weight. This is the headline, uh, which is for smaller size than the banner. We have, uh, this is a title composed in the um, headline. And finally, we have also a deck version for uh, sizes between uh, text and uh, headline. My first typeface for a newspaper was not done by any request, was done by my own initiative and is based on a uh, 18th century Spanish type called made by Eudald Pradel. I call it Eudald News. I'm just going to show you a few examples of it. It was uh, far more simple than the one I'm doing for El Pais with much less uh, variations, but it ended up uh, used in a, a couple of newspapers, uh, not just in Portugal, but in other places in the world. As was mentioned before, after that, uh, I think it, that this was in uh, 2006, maybe, or 2005, I, I designed a typeface for the mainly weekly newspaper. Uh, slowly, I, I, I start moving away from the historical model and try to introduce more uh, contemporary um, details on the design, as you can see here. This is the newspaper. One title composed. It's a rather uh, quite condensed font because, as um, as the opposite that one might think, if we have a language with uh, long words, we need a wider type, and with short words, we need a more condensed. Uh, we can have a more condensed uh, font. For longer words, if we use a condensed font, we might fit more words in a certain space, but they become very fuzzy. You need some air, you need some white in order to figure out uh, a long word. Portuguese is more is made of short words. Okay, this is an example of the text. And then after that, I designed a typeface for a Swedish newspaper called Svenska Dagbladet. This one is wider than uh, um, Expresso. And also, um, this is the version for text. For this project is the first time that I have designed also a matching sans serif and also a slab serif. And they, uh, in total, I guess there was uh, about 65 fonts designed for the 
newspaper. N newspaper typography involves a lot of boring work and work that looks similar, but it's uh, very uh, important that it's done this way. Okay, you, you have uh, information. In this case, I tried to, to make the three versions not really uh, uh, derivation, <laughs> I don't know the word in English, <laughs> uh, of each other, but rather design them independently to match with each other. So that it's not really a relation of proportions between the, the, the serif, the sans serif, and the slab serif. Okay. And if you want to know more of this, ty of this typeface, you buy Le Zeco. It's uh, the typeface utilize, uh, used by <laughs> Le Zeco. Okay. Here you see an example. Okay. Here you see Le Journal de Dimanche, who used also a typeface of mine. I, I think at least they used before. Okay. So. On a eu euh, les évasions françaises et vous avez à voir l'évasion portugaise. <laughs> ah, so, sorry. Grotek. Uh, now we're going to move to also a very old typeface of mine that I, uh, it was conceived for uh, newspapers as well for titling and uh, it was first used in uh, Surf Portugal when I was working there. I designed it for Surf Portugal and later on I added um, more weights, now I think it has 10 weights with uh, italics. I'm going to show you some examples. It's a, a traditional uh, a grotesque font, but I tried to, to introduce some, some little... Oh, this should work now, but I don't know. Well, some little features that move it aw away from a very mechanic uh, font. Like you see in the letter D, the connection on the bottom is rounded, but on the top is, is uh, uh, straight. And in the, in the P, that way, voila. Okay, you see here is round, here it connects straight. Here it connects straight, here it's round. This is a very subtle thing, but through the typeface, it gives a more uh, human or humanist or calligraphic, if you may say, flow uh, to this uh, design. Okay, this is, that was the lighter version and this is the heavier version. And you see, I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to see more of this typeface, you have to go <laughs> to the uh, campaign de Monsieur Emmanuel Macron and I'm very proud uh, that they choose to use one of my, my fonts. I would like to thank, Ke, uh, but I forgot the name, and Jean-Francois will help you. Thibaut, comment il s'appelle? Thibaut? Thibaut Cazère, merci. <laughs> C'était lui qui a uh, choisi. Uh, comment? Ah, English. Oh, sorry. It's, it's very difficult. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for Agnès to, parle, uh, to speak. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is uh, another typeface, an, oh, another uh, grotesque that I designed inspired by French typefaces from the Fondation Typographique Gustave Mayer. Uh, I, I took quite a, a, a five years to conclude this uh, typeface and it's going to be uh, my next uh, release. Probably we don't, you don't find really much of the French thing in this typeface, but uh, for me it has a touch uh, of French. I will want to show you some examples of the glyphs in bigger size. He has a rather quite slanted italic, and I have created some alternate uh, versions of uh, A and G that makes it like work as uh, two completely uh, different typefaces. Uh, I will show you that in the end. Also for the capital R. So if you go back here, you see this is more where well the R and the A it's more Helvetica, but then the G is more Franklin, and then here we switch the things a little bit around. Okay, the italic has also this variation more calligraphic. 
and this is all the weights that it has, and its italics. Algar, comment vous disiez? <laughs> Here you can see the the use of the alternates and how it uh, changed the the feel we have of the of the world. And here also. And here you can also make see the difference if we use the alternates or if we use the original shapes. We move to that. Okay. And here another example of the regular weight. Later on, I decided that I wanted a typeface to match with this uh, grotesque, and I designed a monospaced font based on the same shapes. Uh, I took away the lighter weights that became really odd uh, when designing monospaced, and uh, I've designed this um, monospaced font based on the, on the same shapes. Uh, now it's I'm going to show you, uh, I have this example because as it was said before, the Portuguese citizen card is made with typefaces that I have designed. So for sure I'm the only Portuguese that has a citizen card with his own typefaces. <laughs> <laughs> and every Portuguese is carrying my work on their pocket. <laughs> That's funny. So actually, they choose Merlo, which is a Spanish font for a Portuguese typeface. The passport, the but well, it was not my choice. This is an example of Merlo typeface I designed it in uh, 1998, and I developed it here through the years. It's a really classic uh, font. It's inspired by Spanish fonts, but I think the Spanish were inspired by the French. So it looks a bit French for me. Flama is probably the most well-known uh, font of mine. I will not spend much time speaking about it. I will just show you the examples, the, the variations that I have designed so far. There are still a lot of italics that I want to design, but I, I have trouble in finding the the time is a typeface made of very simple and basic forms, but somehow it has proved to, to, to work through the years. Now I'm going to show you quite quickly uh, for those who don't design a font and for those who want to become a, a font designer, more or less what's inside of, of, of a font. We, th we tend to think of a font with uh, uppercase, lowercase, figures, maybe some punction, but Sometimes we have no idea of the work involved to create a full typeface. So I'm going to show you. After we have the, the basic uh, characters that we can start testing the font, there's still a lot of work to do with, uh, I don't know how to say this in English. I just know in Portuguese. Then you have the math signs. Then you have uh, more punction, more trade signs. Then you start having uh, glyphs that you don't know what they are used for, but you have to design them. And then you have <laughs> <laughs> currency symbols. And then you have accents. But then you have a lot of accents. And then you have more accents. And then suddenly you have fractions and smaller figures and arrows and squares and someone asks you for a Cyrillic version and then you find yourself uh, seeing what is uh, uh, shared between the Latin alphabet and the uh, uh, Cyrillic alphabet and the white is the one that we share but the other ones have to be designed. I've done that with the help of uh, native uh, Russian speakers of course and this is, so in the end, we might end up with uh, something like uh, 500 glyphs or something like that. Jean why makes fonts with more glyphs than that. But well, <laughs> he's going to show you one day. So exit from Flama. I'm almost done. So I, I've been uh, aside with the typefaces for newspapers. I, I, I like a lot the historical models uh, of... Uh, 
of uh, types to inspire me and to design. And this one in particular is very special for me because it's a Franco-Portuguese, is a, a Franco-Portuguese font. It was the s only typeface that was cut for the Portuguese kind kingdom and it was cut by a French. A French guy called Jean de Villeneuve uh, he went to Portugal in the beginning of the 70th century and he designed the, the, uh, the font for the Portuguese uh, uh, king. We have not a Portuguese that have done it because you don't know that, but when we want to build, make a building in Portugal, we call an architect from Italy. If we want to make uh, a typeface, we call a French. Uh, we have this habit, I don't know why, but well. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you uh, a few examples of the model that I have used to create my own typeface. I'm still, this typeface is still in a pretty early stage as I want to make it some, something really big. I've been working on that for six years now. Of course, not every day, not every month and not every year, but <laughs> it's on my hands uh, for about six years now. I found it very beautiful. You see... The, this is for the students that I was talking this morning. You see the A over there? I have corrected it with a pencil over it so I can figure out more uh, the shape. I didn't make it that well. This is, I didn't add um, access of any original, except for one book, uh, original examples of the fonts. I, I had uh, photocopies that someone gave me and I've been working based on these uh, photocopies. You see, Jean de Villeneuve, uh, les caractères que Jean de Villeneuve y a gravé pour le service de l'Académie Royale de l'Histoire Portugaise. Voilà. C'est écrit comme ça, hein. quand même. <laughs> ouais. Oh, oops. Here you can see the corrections that I, I, I do by hand over the original font, so I, I try to figure out uh, better how it works. Here you start to have a better example of what I'm working on and the original. I try to, to stick with the original, but I, I take any freedom that uh, might be required to fix or correct or change anything. I, I like to look at historical models, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't stay very attached to it. I try to, to, to move away. Okay, this is an example of, I, I, have, I have only worked on, on the display version and I will have to work on, uh, on uh, uh, for smaller sizes. I don't know, for me it, it looks, for, it's Portuguese but it looks uh, enough French. Fournier, the, the truc comme ça. But it's, this is one of my favorite fonts that I have worked on. And that's why I'm taking so long, because I think it, it has to be the best one. I always think that about the one that I'm working on. <laughs> I'm working on six weight. This is the italic. He has this feature of having no serifs on the, on the bottom of the P and Q, which I find it was, they were not cut. They were not there. Okay. Here you have uh, some examples of words. The italics, I find them particular. If you look closer, you will see that there's some still some things to be fixed, kerning pairs and all that, but I think it's interesting to show you this work. The, the, the capitals are quite modern and, and quite uh, French to me, even if they still carry a little bit of the old style. This is... Uh, I like to, sh to see this typeface in big because of the um, power of its character. This is my favorite letter of the alphabet. You see the ink traps at the bottom and down there. This is, uh, I was mentioning this this morning, this is how I group the letters to design them. I usually start with the N, then I design the M, the H, the L, the I. Maybe I do the G or I leave it for later. Then I do the U, the R. I forgot the R this morning and nobody noticed it. So <laughs> the F, the T, so you, you figure out 
how I group the, the, the characters to design them, and I rarely move away from that. When I touch a O, I will go always look at the other shapes. If I touch the N, I go look at the other shapes if they match the, the one. And this is the, oh, I'm gonna show you the last typeface. This is a typeface that I made. Uh, it's a display titling font based on uh, old Portuguese tourist maps that uh, were produced during the dictatorship. And because they were made during that time, people re really didn't care about the, their visual quality. But I found it that, that, that they are very interesting visually and in terms of uh, um, lettering, they are very inspiring. They are made with very nice lettering and I have inspired, uh, made a typeface inspired by that lettering. It's called Rotep. Uh, uh, Ruteiro, that, that ça make sense en français, Ruteiro, ça vient de route de Portugal. C'est la uh, it was the, the small word that they used to, to refer to this collection of maps. So the typeface comes in, in uh, three uh, different uh, variations, I each one with uh, its own uh, characteristics, all of them with lots of um, uh, alternates, and sometimes what is default in one version becomes alternate in the, in the, in the other one. This is the n uh, number two. No. Uh, number three, which is the narrow one. Here I show you the, 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 s the sets of alternates that I've created for all the versions and they are s equal to the three versions. So in the three versions, we have the same set of uh, alternates that makes you uh, create uh, different shapes from the uh, same word. This word means coiffure, hairdresser, en portugais. Okay, these uh, are two, three words composed in uh, the boldest uh, versions using some of the alternates. In fact, this O, it's an alternate form. The S, it's an alternate form. The C, it's an alternate form. The B, as well. We're going you see, this is pretty much also a, a, a sort of letters that you found in Lisbon, in the shops, in old shops, they use it a lot. This style of uh, lettering is uh, quite uh, from Lisbon. This one. Okay, this is the, the last one. And, okay, merci. Hello, hello again. Here we come for the uh, questions and answers period. Uh, Mike is going to go through, not Mike, Jean-Francois with the mic is going to go through. I'm, I'm fascinated because uh, how, how can a post-punk surfer be fascinated in designing very classical fonts? surfers that play violin, no? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Actually, I, I think that um, if I would be a, 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 ty a type designer that would follow the trend of post-punk and surf, every month I will be chasing for the new thing. And that's very tired. And in typography, we rely on things with hundreds of years. So I feel more relaxed with that and I feel more confident with that. You know? That's really interesting. You use the word relax. It's almost like a, uh, it's almost like meditation. It, it, is, it is. It is. It is a very uh, personal thing, uh, and I, I work alone, and I and I live alone. I live alone in a place where I work, while I have a family, but the family lives 300 kilometers away. I will not explain you why now. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I get really uh, deep on the thing and. 
I like to do this uh, more classical stuff than uh, I, I I tend to to think that I don't like to design fonts in the same way that I dress. I don't like people to figure out what fonts I design by the way I dress. <laughs> I, want, I want to leave it for later, for people to look at the fonts. Awesome, this is great. Anybody wants to take the microphone and have questions? We have a question there. All right. Micro, no, it's coming, it's coming. For the... Uh, El Pais font, they, they had you redesign it, right? I'm curious if you could tell us what problems they were having with the original that they asked you to redesign it. They didn't have any problems. I didn't okay. mention <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm joking. They, uh, the font was, when it was designed, it was not predicted for any screen used. Uh, okay. That was the, their first concern. They were using this font on the net and it, the things were not working because, of course, it was not uh, made for the net. Also, by that time, I have designed maybe 15 or 16 variations, and they wanted to use through the supplements and to uh, in more areas of the newspaper, not just the main body. So uh, that's that was. The, but they they wanted just a small change, and and add me a bold and the and I said no, that's not possible. If we want to do, it's like. I want you to uh, rebuild my house, but I want the same house. Uh, it's not possible. If you want to rebuild the house, you have to put the walls down and make them again. It might look similar, and it's the same typeface, it's the same idea, but it's uh, uh, redone. It's like, uh, it's like the Volkswagen Golf. Yeah. It's the same than in the 70s, but it's not the same. So but they're it's they're the same. Using, they're using the new one now, so if you read Alpais now, it's the old one. It's the old one. Okay. Yeah. This one is going to be ready in October. So you are seeing this in very in, in advance. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to uh, ask a question to Mario? Okay. When you've spoken about the double personality, you see? surf from the surf and from the classical. I was just wondering, it's a dream, in fact, as you are a Portuguese designer, have you even uh, had the temptation of having several personalities, yeah, like your great, great writer, Fernando Pessoa, yeah. for, and it's for the audience, who was writing under several names with several styles. Yeah. It's wonderful, I, I was just, dreaming of a, a Portuguese designer who was following like uh, Alessandro Lo Celso who is designing type with, uh, uh, in Argentina who yeah. is designing type um, in homage to Borges or to yeah. art, I see, I see uh, you mean. see? And m maybe for the future. I no? don't know, I, I, I honestly, uh, I think the best way to make an homage to Fernando Pessoa is to design a, a typeface that would be very legible in a book of Fernando mm, Just a neutral. Just that. Kind just of that. neutral. To yeah. honor the, the act of reading, mm. I'm already uh, mm. making an homage of uh, Fernando Pessoa. And that would lead me to another, another question that is, I have doubts that it's possible through a typeface to, to represent that sort of things. I think that it's like, okay, I'm going to talk about uh, Neil Armstrong and I make a typeface with very round O's mm -hmm. because he was a cycling guy. This sort of relation, I don't think it, it exists on typography. No, it it's it's more subtle. It's more subtle. The, the, I, I'm not aware, I, I know uh, Le Celso, but I'm not aware of how he makes the Borges typeface. Honestly, I found that more marketing tricks than any, I, I don't want to sound uh, rush on that, but I, I really have doubts of, uh, well, I can make a typeface. This typeface is dedicated to uh, Camões, you know, Camões, the, yeah. the famous Portuguese poet, much before Fernando Pessoa. But that's, ju that's just talk. Mm. No, no, I, I, I wasn't speaking, compris. yeah, I wasn't speaking oh, oh, about oh, oh. A, a homage, but a, a way of creating, you see, uh, a, a kind uh, a way of creating 
like a spirit, the spirit of creation, like Pessoa, who was several, pers several yeah, personalities. But, but, well, when you have a, a surfer and a musician mm -hmm. of rock designing so mm -hmm. many different mm -hmm. typefaces, you have already that. Mm -hmm. In a way, uh, you understand? Yeah, yeah. I don't design just one style of fonts. I, I can design every style, in that sense. But but that 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 is something that it's not in my mind. Not that I I design typefaces for ego reason because I design it for the readers. But I don't have this sort of. Uh, I might get inspired by a city, or by a book, or by a series of posters, but not really in that sense. Maybe later on. I don't know. You never know. Yeah. So, in uh, in the same uh, thinking, what what makes a French font or a Portuguese font? What's, wha what? What makes a French font a French font? Yeah. Garamond did it. What? <laughs> <laughs> well. What about Portuguese then? What? You said it's French, very French for the font, and it's. I think it's the same. That uh, what 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 makes a Portuguese font? Nothing. There's no. There's no such thing. No, no. If you uh, if you uh, do you do you think that is uh, Angolian classical music? Might be, but I doubt a little bit. Cape Verde classical music. Do you think that exists? So there was not a history in Portugal that we can talk about Portuguese typography. We can talk about Portuguese lettering. There's a lot of lettering there, but that's not typography. There in, the, in, the, in the course of history, when you had uh, Garamond, Fournier, Dido, all, we had nothing. We were buying things from Italy. We were printing the books in uh, Antwerp uh, and in Paris. But th there was not this spirit of the Portuguese uh, kings to, to, to make the, because this is uh, three, four centuries ago, it was not back there. And even in, in the 20th century, there was not uh, this activity in, Portuguese, in Portugal as existed in, in France or Italy or England. And that's why in the very early days of my career, I, I turned myself to Spain. Part of my work is based on Spanish typefaces because I couldn't find any Portuguese. So I designed seven, seven Spanish revivals because suddenly I figured out that the Spanish made what the Portuguese didn't. And there was a moment where the king said, okay, we are expending too much money with the typefaces from Holland. If you are able to make uh, coins, you must be able to make typefaces. And they choose the best engravers from Spain and they made them create typefaces. And for about 40, 50 years, there was a heavy production of what we can call Spanish type. And then it ended. It, there was not before, a little bit, more than Portugal. We can talk about Spanish typography, but we can't talk about the real Portuguese uh, typography. But you're building it now. Well, but you that's Portuguese. another story. That's, that's going to be told in 50 years, or not now. <laughs> but thanks for the compliment. Uh, 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 any more questions? I have a question for you. Ah, vas-y. <laughs> um, I have two questions. Ah. Okay. <laughs> the first is, uh, it seems you're, you're, uh, there is various kind of type designer. There is a one who uh, try to find the perfect shape li like Gerhard Unger. So for 20 years, he will try to find the best shape, but he doesn't do revival at all. Why? There is typeface designer who create new typeface all the time. Whatever it's revival or not, they don't care. They, they do a lot of various kind of things. But you or there is type designer who are better to sensory for another better to serif typeface. And you seem to be someone who do it doing much more revival than actually what we can call new typeface, but something from the past that you transform to make it something from the present day. Uh, why is like that? And does there is a connection with the fact that you like old cars, for example? So uh, to, to renovate something from the past and to make it 
something from present day or to make more to make it more eternal. I have the feeling that when we look to Gerhard Unger, he tried to do something from today. Ouais. With all shape but from today. On 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 the you do that in a different way but I I don't understand how it works. Yeah. My question is not really a question, but it's a question. But uh, I, I want your words about that. Uh, there's several reasons for me to... I think your question is, what makes me uh, so attached to the old models? And if I try to... Well, what I try is to actualize the old... Not really making something new in the same way that Gerard does, but more in the way that uh, Matthew Carter would do. It's like uh, have an old idea, but give it a, 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 a new voice, a new, uh, an actual form, you know? But the idea is that. It's more or less the same as a composer might pick up Beethoven or Mozart and, and make a, a contemporary interpretation. And this doesn't mean that he's going to play it in jazz or or uh, with the electronic beat. No, I'm not saying that. It's going to play with a classical orchestra, but with refinement arrangements, with subtle changes that will make it more pleasant for the current days. So that's what I realize uh, uh, to me. Also because I found in the classical typefaces is where everything is. And if, if I learn how to properly design a classic typeface, and I'm sure you know that. You can do anything after that. You always have this guidance that will keep you on the right track. Uh, but I, I have not this uh, desire of creating uh, new things. Not, neither new, ne neither old. Y this morning you asked me what was most important when I designed a typeface. And I told you after a while, it's that I enjoy designing it. And, and in fact, what makes me a typeface designer for 25 years is because I love to design letters. And I might wake up on Sunday morning and instead of <laughs> going, <laughs> walking my dog, which I don't have a dog, so I stay designing typefaces on Sunday morning, but not with emails, not with phone calls, not with uh, time, just for the pleasure of designing uh, letters. And that's what keeps me uh, moving. Does there is some relation with uh, your, your interest My old in cars. In, in, old ca cars. in old cars, yes? Well, what I find in old cars is the same quality that I find in the old typefaces. Is the quality when things were made with time and with the purpose of being there for the lifetime, you know? And today, I think we are living in a moment that the things are made for use today and throw away tomorrow. And I like, uh, I like to have a car that has 40 years and still behave as a, uh, a normal car, like the recent ones. It doesn't go that fast, but that's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Any more questions? Actually, I would say that uh, these words are quite nice to end an evening. You know, it's highly philosophical. Ah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so uh, I think we should give a big hand to Mario. Merci beaucoup. And uh, I would uh, end the stream by giving a big hand to uh, Jean-Francois and his team at uh, Type and Paris. Good night. <laughs>